Hello and welcome to Weekend Investing Daily Bites. We are shooting episode 347 today, 6th of February. And we will talk about how markets are a regret machine. Uh, in every scenario, in every action that we do in the markets, uh, there is some sort of a regret that comes around and we will talk about that. Uh, so it's a more of a you know, small class on behavioral finance. Uh, first, a look at the markets. <clears throat> Nifty has been ranging within the budget day bar. The budget day move was 17900 odd on the top, 17300 odd on the bottom. So the last three sessions have been what are called inside bars. So they are <coughs> within this large bar and today's session was within the previous day's bar. So the market is coiling up for an eventual move. Whether it happens on the upside or on the downside is tough to say. But we are not so far away from this breakout trend line also. So my sense is that while 17,918,000 is a reasonable uh, resistance here, uh, there is good support that may come around these bottom levels also given that it's been many, multiple times that the market has turned here. It all depends now how the dollar behaves and how these flows to emerging markets and the FPIs uh, do in the next six weeks uh, of the remaining seven weeks of the remaining financial year. March is usually a dull month uh, as I have seen mostly, but February uh, may have some more action left. Uh, before we get into a dull march, maybe. Uh, in terms of the sectoral makeup, uh, public sector enterprise stocks uh, gained back some of the lost ground of the week at 0.7%. FMCG real estate infra also up uh, slightly. Uh, metal stocks down also because uh, it includes some Adani stocks also in that category but metals in general were down today uh, I saw Jindal steel and Tata steel under some pressure energy stocks also minus 0.7 percent commodities so what has happened is that the dollar index has started to go up after a while and that has had a counter impact on commodity uh, prices as well as uh, uh, emerging market sentiment. Uh, IT stocks also reeling after a fall in uh, NASDAQ on Friday and Nifty closing about half a percent lower. So over a period of last one month, there have been significant cuts on PSU banks, on energy stocks, on metal stocks, in pharma stocks. Uh, so it's been sort of a mixed bag the last few many months. On a full 12 month basis, uh, only PSU banks and FMCG have really done well, uh, along with some autos. Uh, the worst performing sector in the last 12 months has been real estate, IT stocks, and some energy stocks along with pharma. <clears throat> Broader indices, mid and small cap index up slightly 0.6%, nifty next 50 up 0.5%, small cap index also 0.2%. Uh, but the larger indices, CNX 500, CNX 200, nifty 50, all down between 0 and minus half a percent. NNF 10 on the weekend investing side gaining half a percent, evergreen 0.4%, ATH flat. Others losing between 0 and minus 0.7%. So nothing really exceptional on this front. <clears throat> banking, private banking losing some ground here. ICICI Bank down 1%. Kotak Bank almost 2%. Uh, Indescent Bank has been, I think, a bit more buoyant within the banking space. So plus 2.3% there. Uh, IT stocks, as I mentioned, down half a percent to 2%. Infosys down nearly 2%. JSW steel almost 3% down, Tata steel 2.4% down, cement stocks also reeling, Hindalco also down 2.6%. Uh, 
uh, Aisha Motors down minus 1.6. Other auto stocks reasonably flat. Energy Reliance three quarters of a percent down. ONGC down. BPCL slight tick up. ITC maintaining uh, its uh, positive trend after good results. Uh, Nestle, Britannia, Levers all flat. Uh, Sun Pharma down marginally. Cipla uh, up. Uh, we have DV's lab taking a dive minus 3.69%. DV's have been exceptionally weak last many sessions. Adani Enterprise after another bout of volatility today, hitting down circuits and then coming back up minus 1%. Adani Ports has done very well today uh, at plus 9.3%, although many other Adani stocks are still under the lower circuit. So that fear has not yet gone away. <coughs> Coming to the topic of the day, uh, that markets will make you always regret. Why am I saying that? Is that you take any scenario in the market. Let's say you are a discretionary investor. By discretionary investor, I mean you take decisions on the fly uh, and not based on any particular framework. Um, so you have full discretion at any point of time to do what you like, what to buy, when to buy, how much to buy, and on the selling side as well. So for most of you, you would have noticed that when you sell a stock, after your sale, the stock goes up. I mean, if you do witness this, uh, you are not a rarity it happens to almost everybody so don't curse yourself don't regret if you sell anywhere and the stock goes up it happens to almost everybody so let's say we'll use yes bank example because it has nice upward trend and the downtrend also so let's say you bought here and then 38% below entry price, you decide to book a loss. <clears throat> and then the stock took off. And then for years, you kept watching the just watching the stock that why did I sell here? You know, at 10x, you are, uh, you know, your ego is hurt, you are regretting like crazy, that just in six months, I sold my stock and had I kept it for six years, uh, I would have made 5x or 6x and possibly 10x from where I sold. So huge regret, you know, in terms of uh, uh, the journey that was possible for you. But you sold it and it went up. Second case, you buy a stock anywhere and the stock will likely to go down. I'm sure most of you have witnessed that as well. And again, I will say this is happening to everybody. So this is nothing exceptional. Let's say after watching for those six years, you finally say, you know, I want to get in now. I've lost this move from 60 to 380, but I don't want to miss the move from 380 to 2000. Because Yes Bank is going to become the next HDFC bank. And it has been going up for the last six years. So you have full confidence. Also amplified by the regret of all these years. That you have to get it now. So you buy the stock here and of course it drops. Now... <clears throat> Most people will experience this, you know, regret while selling, regret while buying all the time. Only in very few circumstances, you may call that, you know, some uh, streak of luck that you may get a few tops and bottoms. Maybe that is also very, I think, a rarity that you are able to sell at the top and buy the bottom. That's a rarity and that's probably more to do with lady luck than anything else. Nothing by design, I think. <clears throat> so 
most people will go through these regrets in a very big way and once you bought here you know and the stock tanked then of course maybe you did not have an exit plan how to get out of this uh, and possibly a, week, a few years later after holding averaging doing all sort of things you again sold the stock exactly where you sold it you know sometime 6 7 8 years ago again booking a loss uh, and of course uh, this resulting in a huge capital loss as well now third scenario you sell anywhere and the stock went down and you are extremely happy you are thrilled that you have sold somewhere and the stock has gone down from there but now the question is that you have not sold your entire stock you have sold only 20% of it that will give you the part that the 20% part that you have sold you have been able to sell at the right price will not give you enough happiness what regret of the rest 80% oh why didn't i sell my entire 100% so i mean coming back to this chart you maybe you sold uh, maybe you sold 20% uh, when you when you sold your stock here let's assume you bought it here and you sold it here and you sold only 20% and the rest 80% you held on for which you have no gains now over 6 7 years but only 20% you were able to sell here you will have huge regret why didn't i sell out my entire quantity at that point of time what happened to me so again regret what is the fourth case you already know the fourth case fourth case is buy anywhere so okay so you bought anywhere and stock suddenly rocketed up so you bought this breakout here at 100 rupees and stock goes up it goes up 4x within no period of time but you only allocated a small percentage of your intended allocation and the rest of it you know is just sitting in cash all this time because you are just waiting you thought that you'll buy something here and then you know it will come back and retest this breakout it never came back and then it never came back and then it never came back and you kept waiting for this so huge regret if you bought at the right time but you didn't buy your allocation that you wanted to buy again regret so case a sell anywhere stock likely stock will go up regret case b buy anywhere stock going down regret case c sell anywhere stock goes down in your direction but you haven't sold all case 4 you bought something stock went up but you didn't buy enough I regret 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 everything in the market all the decisions are giving you regret what that regret is doing that regret with each regret you are becoming unsure about your own decision making because every time you are doing this you are coming back and hitting yourself with that regret that you made a blunder again this time what are you doing you don't know how to invest in the markets so your confidence and your decision making is getting badgered with this regret each time while not realizing that this is the part and parcel of this entire game if you play it discretionally if you have a non discretionary system what you will do is you will blame the system for it you may have designed the system but because you are not taking ad hoc decisions at those moments of buying and selling and that this system as a entity is taking those decisions you will not beat yourself up for it you will say that i have a tried and tested system yes sometimes it will make mistakes sometimes it will do really well i am happy to follow this and so what if you know it it bought and 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 stock went down so what in the next one i'll do better so you come out of that whirlpool of you know making yourself the victim when you move from discretionary to a non discretionary discretionary system uh so 
this is something uh, that i wanted to share with a lot of the new uh, uh, i would say new investors who in the last year and a half would have got reasonably frustrated with the markets not having gone up uh, i think markets as i mentioned in this tweet are a place where you will fly and you will fall and then you will fly and you will fall again and then you'll fly and fall yet again and you keep doing that till such time that this rhythm of you know flying and falling and flying and falling and flying and falling becomes second nature to you and you accept that in your stride and you know that this is the path that will lead me to success so i have to you know bear this and this is something that i cannot avoid and this is these are the stepping stones to to where i want to reach Uh, one more insight before i end this uh, so usd inr uh, 8270 uh, at the cusp of a breakout again um, i was hoping that once this down leg started here that it will break down from this trend line but it it seems like you know this is just a consolidation here and this this flag pole will may continue upwards so we are just less than maybe like few few uh, 10 or 20 paisa from an all time high two reasons that i think is what are happening is the continuous uh, fpi outflows that are happening in the markets that is causing uh, some loss of the rupee and also this tcs uh, 20% tcs imposed on lrs and uh, on other things from 1st of july i think it will be notified so a lot of money may want to leave before that date that will cause some outflows uh by that time so and and the dollar index is strengthening commodities and emerging markets are getting sluggish because of that so this is something that one needs to watch out a bit um uh, this will this will hurt some imports for sure but uh, uh, on a macro basis uh, i think uh, it's not that the time where the rupee starts to become stronger so with this i want to come to an end to this uh, weekend investing daily bite but not before the daily reminder that the wild program the first ever loyalty discount program on the small case platform started by weekend investing it enables you to renew your current subscriptions increasingly at a higher discount as you renew the same subscription again it ensures that you have a longer uh, duration of uh, standing in that particular uh, strategy so that you can get the best benefits out of that strategy over a longer term every strategy will not give returns every year and that is the nature of the market that's the nature of momentum investing also uh the additional feature that we've built in here is that the same uh, loyalty discount that you will reuse to renew your current subscription you can also reuse it to subscribe to any other weekend investing strategy and create a bouquet of strategies so this is uh, something that unique that we have done which no other managers uh, so far has tried uh that's the end to this weekend investing daily bite thank you so much for watching please do share these videos uh we have a very poor uh, uh distribution strategy on these videos we are focused mostly on more serious content instead of the all all kinds of drama that happens on lot of other channels so please help us with uh, you know spreading these videos with your friends and family thanks bye